All right, so we want to get your share page looking a little bit more like this. Um, so to get going towards this direction, there's a few things that I want to point out. We want to have our unique URL link. We do have the reference code, but we don't have the full link. Make it nice and easy. So once we have that full link, it'll be easy to add uh, share buttons like these. So Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Reddit, and Google+. Uh, and then also we want to know how many of our friends actually joined um, based off of our share link itself. So if we look in our admin, we see our joins. We have a, a nice list of people who have joined for Coding for Entrepreneurs at Gmail. Um, so looking back at that one, we paste this in and let's actually update this page so we can see who all has joined on that actual page. Um, so what we did before was we had it where we could see our all the users that were related um, to any given page with these two, right? So that was on our home page. We would be able to see that after they entered in the form. So now on the share page, this is where we actually want to build in uh, some of this stuff. So the reference ID and getting the object and all that. Um, so what we'll do now is we're going to grab this right here and we're gonna paste it into this share area. So we'll just say objects equals to, or actually I'm gonna leave it as obj equals to that. And then we will also have one for count. So the actual count of the object. So I'm gonna leave it as obj.count. All right, so now that we have this, uh, let's we can get rid of that one. Uh, we're going to filter, we actually first need to get the reference ID that's related to this share, right? So the object for it, the join object for it. So let's look into our models. So it's going to be this reference ID. We want to get that one. So let's go ahead and do that. So here we will do um, the join object equals to join.objects.get. And then we will say ref ID equals to ref ID. And let's make sure our fields are correct. So ref ID is equal to ref ID. Okay, so we, since it's a get, there's a good chance that the reference ID might not actually exist, right? So if it doesn't exist, then we should just raise a 404 page error. So HTTP 404 is what we'll import up here and make sure it's HTTP 404 just like that. Um, so we will try then to get the join object. I'll just tab everything in, except, so if there's an exception, meaning if this join object does not exist, it's gonna raise an exception. That exception is join dot does not exist. So the model does not exist, and then it's gonna run some type of exception. So uh, I'm going to do raise HTTP 404 and accept raise HTTP 404. So I'm just going to explain these exceptions real quick. Um, so what this one is explicitly saying what the exception is going to be. So we know that if it's not here, it's going to raise this exception does not exist. You can Google Django exceptions to see all the different exceptions that are actually there and read about them. Um, but what we, will, what we see here is this is the only exception that kind of makes sense for what's going on here. There might be other things that happen. And what I want to do, though, is if there is anything else, I'm just going to raise that exception here. Now, we don't actually need this since we are raising HTTP 404 um, two times, right? So if it's going to be the do not exist, if it doesn't exist, then... Um, we just, we're gonna raise the 404. All other exceptions, we're gonna raise the 404. So we might as well just say all exceptions raise the 404. Okay, so that's that's what this is doing. So we're gonna get this object, and if this object is, exists, it's gonna raise, it's not gonna raise the 404. Actually, it's gonna return uh, the template file and all that. All right, so now that we have this join object, we wanna get the friends for it. So what we saw before was this right here. So realistically, our count is actually going to be this. So count, instead of being object being like that, it's going to be join object and then dot referral dot all dot count, just like that. 
right? So that's actually getting the count that we need. We don't actually need the objects themselves, right? We don't need the ones that have, um, like we wouldn't need this right here, right? We won't need the list of friends. So this essentially would give us the list of friends referred, right? So by that object there. So we don't actually need that. All we really need is the object itself, so the reference ID itself, and then the count. That's all we really need. Otherwise, we just couldn't, because um, if we look at our example, we see that we have a reference ID here, and then we have a list of friends that are joined. So if this was full, it would say all the friends that have joined specifically because of this reference ID. That's really all you need to show on the share page. Uh, us on the back end, we, we want to keep all of these objects. We want to actually store them. But as far as what they see on the front end, they don't need that. All they need is a count and then which reference ID it is. So in this case, join object, I'm going to change this reference ID to be join object dot ref ID. It will be the same, but I just want to actually have it related to the model that I'm getting. And then I'm going to set the count equaling to count. And then I'll just do reference URL equals to, all right, wait, let's put those in quotes. So reference URL or ref URL is equal to ref URL. All right, so for us, on Swift for Entrepreneurs, I have swiftforentrepreneurs.com. That's the actual reference URL. Um, so I'm actually going to put it as uh, ref URL being HTTP colon slash slash launch with code.com question mark ref equals two and then percent S for string substitution. And then we were to do percent, and then inside the parentheses, we just get the um, reference ID, which will be the same as this right here. So now we have a reference URL that we can use in our template as well. So we've got our count, our reference ID, and our reference URL. Now you don't actually need reference URL and reference ID. You could probably just use one rather than the other, but we're gonna keep both of them for now. We probably will eventually just have these two, but let's just keep those for now. Okay, so now that we've that, let's go in our share, share.html, and we're gonna update that to allow us to see our count and our reference URL. So in here, we'll do count and ref URL, okay? So if we look at this, we refresh in here, we now see our count is seven and our reference URLs right there. So if I hit break a couple times, that way I can see it separated out a little bit. I have seven, so the total people I've invited is, is seven, and then I have my link here, uh, which is resembling this right here. So that's all we really need from our view um, for this particular one, right? So this is all, that's it, that we don't need anything else. And then also if we, do something that doesn't exist, it's gonna give us this page not found, All right? So if I left out, let me just copy this stuff and actually paste it in. If I took it out of that try exception block and I did it like this and did a refresh, it's gonna see this does not exist. So that's the exception that we actually handle with this right here, right? Cause that actual, um, this is the query that's calling for this. So that's what that's doing and it's raising this exception. So instead of seeing something like this, which would actually be a 500 error, so a server error for the end user, instead they see a 404 error, which is a standard HTML error that's saying that page is not found or HTTP error. So now if I refresh, we get this 404 page, which is perfect. And we see once we change our settings to false, we will see a standard 404 page there. Great. All right, so now that we have this, um, we have all the data we need to actually start working on this, how this page is actually gonna work and how it's gonna look. Um, so how we make it look nice and look a little bit better and fit along the lines of what we've got here is something we'll actually do in the next video. Um, but something I do wanna point out is since this is a link, um, you could actually change this to being a whole variety of things. 
Uh, you could also set it in your settings. So let's for let's say for instance, I wanted to have like my my root uh, URL. I could put it here in the settings, and there's there's a few different ways to do this, but I'm just going to do it so we can see it. And I'll just say uh, share URL equals to, and I'm going to actually paste in this right here, this whole thing. So it's going to equal into that. So it's with the reference ID on there. So we could have it as that. And then that way in our view, we can import our settings file. So from django.conf import settings. And now we can just set this equals to settings.share URL, like what we have here. And then we would just say plus, and instead of percent, we just change that to str, because that'll be string. Because if we see, we've got that reference ID there. So in our view, now that should work just fine. If we refresh up, looks like we have an error. And let's see what that error is by taking this out of the block. If we take it out, see this is where the exception blocks could sometimes make it a little harder on us to see what this is. So share URL saying settings does not is not actually in settings. So let's go back into settings, make sure you save it and make sure the share URL is actually cr spelled correctly. And it looks like it is. So now that I saved it, it is actually working. Um, so that was just the issue, I didn't save it. But as you notice, if I put things that run errors inside of this this try, you might run into an error that you didn't expect to be there. So that's where you could take it out of that try and accept block. So you can actually see what the problem is, is, is happening. All right, so as we see here, that link is exactly the same and it is now working. So we could even change our share URL uh, on the fly now. So if we ever use the share URL again and we want it for local testing, we could just change it to being what our local URL is, just like that, and add ref equals to the end of it. So now that I have that, I can just do a quick refresh and we see that, hey, now I actually have the share URL that will allow me to test it locally uh, versus the share URL that I had before, which was a live URL, which doesn't allow me to test it at all. Um, so there's there's kind of a way to do that. Uh, there is another way, but I'm not going to get into it. It's essentially allowing you to set up your own domain based off of um, some settings that you would have using the Django Sites framework. So there is another way to do it, which you would have to add it into installed apps and go through a few other steps if you really wanted to make it a little bit more um, Django coded to use the URLs that way. So look up Django Sites Framework if you want a more Django alternative to what I just did here, which would allow you to basically change these two things in the admin versus um, in the settings file. But that's not necessary for us. All that's necessary is that we have the right share URL working and ready to go when we actually go live. Um, all right, so now we will come back and actually get our page looking a little bit more like this. There's certain things that are not gonna look like this uh, exactly, uh, but we will get closer to it in the next one. All right, see you then.